classic rugged coastline that typifies parts of the southwest and now used by adventure groups. It is thought that the term co-steering was first used in the early 70s in Pembrokeshire, but soon came to Devon and Cornwall and is now becoming increasingly popular. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't this something we're trying to discourage youngsters from doing? We try and stay away from the uh, tombstoning sort of name really, because uh, that's been associated historically in the past with a lot of people doing it without lead instructors and the correct safety equipment. What we have, uh, we have buoyancy aids, helmets, wetsuits, the correct first aid and safety gear with us in backpacks, uh, flares, mobile telephone, things like that, so that if there are any potential hazards, we can deal with those, still get encouraging people to come out um, and enjoy the coastline, but under a safe environment. Things I do for spotlight! <laughs> <laughs> it's been really good, yeah. yeah Cold? Good. Not no. too bad. What's the best bit? Uh, jumping, jumping in. Jumping, yeah. jumping in. Jumping, definitely. One of the advantages of this is you're coming to these stretches of the coastline, which you wouldn't normally be able to get to. Even if you're on a boat, you wouldn't be able to get to where we're going here, because you have to do it on foot or with a little swim, which is what we've just done. So it's great. Safety is paramount and several companies now offer guided trips. We call the Coast Guard before we go out and after a session. Yeah. We also uh, recce all of the routes so we know the uh, different routes which we can follow at low tide and at, ho and at high tide. Yeah. Uh, and that makes it much, much safer. So it's actually a really good way to explore the coast as well as being great fun. As with all these adventure sports, they come with a health warning. This is part of an organised group, this co-steering, and that way it's safe. See you later.